Welcome to another edition of Swim Easy Speed. My name is Tim Floyd. I am a longtime swim and triathlon coach. And uh, today I thought we'd do something kind of fun. And, and it's a, this is actually a pretty good coaching exercise. Um, what we were, what I wanted to do was um, show what an athlete swimming at 3, 18, 100 looks like. So that's effectively the Ironman swim cutoff. It's a little bit under 319. It's 318 and change gets you 219.59. Um, and that's 100 yards. So three 318 per 100 yards. And then I wanted to show kind of more of, you know, 115, 100. So, um, and that's kind of 52 and change. 52 minutes and change for 2.4 miles um, or 3.8 kilometers, whatever your persuasion may be. Um, so what I did was I filmed myself. I set the endless pool at 3.1800 um, and I swam and then kind of took uh, videos from a bunch of different angles. And so what we'll do is we just break it down and you'll get to see kind of uh, what I was doing. Now, the important part from a coaching perspective is this is um so i had to kind of to go 318 100 i had to kind of drastically change some of the things i was doing in the water and so then it gives me an idea of athletes that i'm working with um what they might be struggling with to achieve and why and why their stroke is is struggling the way it is um and look there are plenty of athletes that uh, genuinely struggle making the the um, two hour and twenty minute swim cutoff time. Um, you know, it's uh, it's not unusual to have um, a couple dozen athletes that that DNF the end of the uh, of the swim or never even make it out of the water. So um, it it's just a good exercise to go through. You know, because I I can pretty much comfortably swim at about one fifteen a hundred right now. Um, maybe not for 2.4 miles, but, um, yeah, it's not kind of where I'm working terribly hard and, um, yeah, it's easy to lose sight of, um, what ath other athletes might be struggling with. And then just to really kind of understand that the wide range of, um, movement that happens between 52 and 219. So just remember, it's all about trying to figure out where your athletes are and, and, help them get to a a more efficient kind of uh, spot in their stroke so all right so here we go we're gonna just start up the video and and kind of go through so here's the the 31800 so this is kind of pacing at about uh, three seconds per stroke cycle this one's at about 1.9 and that's probably a little too even too slow so here's what the current looks like at 318 um, and then we'll get a, a look at the back of the... So there's the kind of ripples that's hitting the back of the wall. Here's 115. And that's the difference. So now here's kind of the the stroke-by-stroke stroke comparison. So we're, we're taking a look at it. And, you know, so you can see just some of the initial differences. Um... You know, the, the, the obvious one is kind of stroke tempo is way off. Um, you know, I really had to, with the bottom one, so with this one, I really had to let go of my core. So what I mean when I, let, when I say let go of my core is that I wasn't engaging it at all. And the one thing that happened was if I would engage it in the slightest, and I wasn't. When I say I wasn't pulling, I wasn't pulling either. Um, you know, I was trying to kind of turn my hand a little sideways, um, just basically move the arm through the water, not focused on any pressure on the hand at all. And um, but if I would engage my core in the slightest, I would shoot forward um, against the current. Um, so that was one of the things that kind of really came out of this was was how much I had to let go of the core um, where it was it was a lot of work to let go of it that much. 
Um, the other thing that I did that that happened a lot was um, I really had to let kind of the back end fall um, in the water. And so that my quads were 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 kind of well below my body line. So, you know, I was more in the water like that. So then the water kind of was hitting my quads and my lower part of my leg right there and slowing me down. So I was looking for ways to um, increase drag um, and and not be as in a kind of long and flat position on the water as um, I would otherwise. And then you can see kind of with the top one again, so we'll back it up a little bit and start from the beginning. So here's the top one. You can see I'm really, really kind of pulling with the entire stroke. The core is, is really, really engaged. Um, hips and shoulders are rotating together. Um, and then the feet are um, fairly close to the surface of the water. <laughs> You can see them popping up every now and again. But this pool is tough. The faster it goes, the more it's going to press that back end down um, uh, with the current kind of going over your body. And, and then effectively what it does is presses all this down. So it runs over like this and then presses down right there. Um, but those were kind of some of the big differences. And then we're going to go to kind of the underwater here. And so here's the difference kind of underwater. Um, you know, I'm really, really kind of just dropping a lot of pressure, trying to, you know, make it where those hands don't grab any water at all. Um, and, you know, I really let go of um, the core in the, in the, uh, in the lower video. Um, and then just tried to create as much drag as possible. And then here you can see in this one, I'm trying to do everything I can to get a little bit higher on the water. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, it's a kind of a, it's an important exercise, I think, and, um, to kind of go through if you're a coach, um, you know, it can give you a lot of insight into, um, what it feels like for your athletes to kind of move through the water and what they're doing and where some, um, things that you might want to focus on first. Um, and y you know, this is what I've kind of known for a while is that, the first thing that you've got to get is to try and get your athletes to really, really engage the core on the water. And what I mean is kind of create tension in the core. And you want to think of it from this perspective. Um, you know, normally when we're standing upright, gravity creates that natural tension in the core. The core then kind of can coordinate all of these different movements. It's part of the reason why um, you know, run coaches when you see an athlete getting tired um, and things aren't working as well. Uh, the cue is to run tall um, because then that further increases that neuromuscular connectivity, makes things a little bit more efficient. And so what we're trying to do then is since we're prone in the water and 10% of our body weight roughly, um, gravity really isn't working on the core. We've got to create that tension. And um, so if you can lengthen out that midsection, you're going to be able to create that tension in the water. So... Um, I hope this helps. Thank you again for tuning in. Uh, please like, share, comment, and subscribe. You can find us, find a little bit more information about us at swimeasyspeed.com and follow along on Instagram at swimeasyspeed. Um, we will check you at the, we will see you at the next uh, video.